Join us as Open Door Ministry celebrates its seventh anniversary of Pastor Daniel Crawford, Lady J, and people. Enjoy reflections of the last seven years of ministry. Sometimes our lives it'll be that way of a runaway train. And we think the brake is on and the brake is not set properly. Let go and let God. And that's the unstoppable glory that you will receive. Ready when Jesus comes. Oh, yeah. That means that they love you. That's right. If they That's didn't, right. they let you go on out. That's right. Good morning, Open Door. Good morning. Good morning, Open Door. Good morning. Good morning, Open Door. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Keep your faith. Amen. Trusting in the Lord. Yes. That that right there is enough to be yes. excited about. Hallelujah. Yes. 911. God help me. Cry out for the Lord's help if you need help. Hallelujah. Call on the name of Jesus. What shall I do? <laughs> what shall I do? Pray. Have faith. And trust in God. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. Yeah. 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 Now, Thank you, Jesus. By that, I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Welcome to everybody, to your own church. Welcome. <laughs> a lot of times we don't have the abundant light because we talk against it. Amen. You have to learn how to speak God's word Amen. over your life. Amen. What you have to do is say, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Have you tried him? Yes. yes. He opens the door that yes. no man yes. can close. I like the name of this church, Open Door Ministry. Yes, yes uh, God opened the door for the ministry. Yes. <laughs> and he closes doors that no man can open. God. Because each day, he gives us new grace. He's about to do a new thing. Black children today are shocked to hear that Henry Ford's idea of the plans for the first automobile was 
conceived. He didn't get the props, but he had the concept. Because so many have struggled to get to where you are today. And they didn't make it. So this is what I believe in. And this is my banner. God can create something new out of something bad. We must have faith that God is going to do something new. It's a year. From all the way from the other side of the country. Came in to be to celebrate with us. This is Queen Mother, Dr. Lois Lake. In the spirit of my ancestors, I come before you. I've been at the United Nations for 50 years as a humanitarian. I'm the Queen Mother of 55 million displaced Africans of the transatlantic ocean of the slave trade. I am the Community Mayor of Harlem and the Ambassador of Goodwill to Africa at the United Nations. I am so moved, Minister, for what you have said to us this morning. For me coming from South Africa, from Cape Town, and there in Cape Town, the Table Mountain of God. It was a father who spoke the universe to it and exist. He is the everlasting God. <laughs> he is the ruler of what? Heaven and earth. It's the star, there's so many stars out there. He counted and numbered all the stars. And then he called them by name. <laughs> That's not awesome, God. Mm -hmm. huh? mm. Thank God for the Son, Jesus Christ. For He died on the cross for my sins and paid the price for my redemption. I want to talk to you today about um, a very controversial figure and an unsung hero, someone who didn't really get his props uh, when he was here. And his name is um, Brother Vernon Johns. Has anybody ever heard of him? He was one of those people that wasn't talked about much, but he was so crucial to where we are today. In 1954, Martin Luther King Jr. succeeded Vernon Johns as minister of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. As Dexter's pastor from 1947 to 1952, Johns was an early proponent of civil rights activity in Montgomery, urging his congregation to challenge the traditional status quo. His early activism and challenges to the power structure paved the way for Dexter's congregation to receive King's socially active ministry and enabled Dr. King to take a leading role in the Montgomery bus boycott. And if the Lord has ever done anything for you, right now where you are, I just want you to praise God. Praise Him because He is God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the praise Him right there, if you will. Amen. When you're lost. Have, uh, have anybody in here ever got lost? Have anybody in here ever lost something? One of the parables of Jesus that He talked about was the shepherd who had lost the sheep. The shepherd went on ahead, 100 sheep and lost one. He left the 99 behind to go find the one. Jesus explained that the sheep was lost. Then that we are, are sometimes like the sheep because we become lost. Jesus seeked out the sinners to save them. <laughs> the lost sheep has to just have trust in the shepherd. Why he needs to have trust in the shepherd? And why he, the sheep trusted the shepherd? First of all, the shepherd did what? The shepherd took care of the sheep. Man, sheep is sometimes smarter than we are. Because y'all respond to folks, y'all really don't know when the devil should be saying something to you and somebody said, oh, you look all good, sound all good, sit in your way, and you just fought the floor. We must totally trust Jesus Christ. We too should work diligently to help others 
to get back to God. And God said, let me show you that I ain't finished with you yet. Every morning I wake up, I go in the bathroom, I look in the mirror, and I see this ugly face. And I say, thank you, Lord. And I'm looking at my chest, and I see this giant scar from the top of my chest going down to the center. And I think about it, how God had brought me. When he cracked me open the first time, and he had to kill me to save me. 27 years later, they went and did it again. They stopped my heart, opened me up again, just to do something else and such. And guess what? God said, I'm not finished with you yet. Amen. He said to go forth and start my ministry. Hallelujah. Start my ministry called Open Door Ministry. Amen. And you go out and reach my people. Let them see the miracles that I can do. My baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so honored and so blessed to have her in my life because I've seen how she touched many people's lives. She prayed for me when I was in need of prayer. And she said that she would be there for me regardless of what I did. That's what a mother would do. When everybody else turned their back on you, mama would be there.
As always, Lord, I want to thank you for watching over your people here at Open Door Ministry. Somebody's out there that's listening to me right now. If you're a fool and you have no concern about consequences, this is for you. If you're doing all these things and not afraid of God and not concerned about the consequences that will happen to you in your life because of your lifestyle and your foolishness, you have no concern about yourself and others, knowing you don't have concern about God. The door is open for you, and nobody can shut the door for you. Because once you put your faith and trust in God and believing in Him and going through that door, I don't care who it is behind you. They might be talking to you and telling you, don't, don't go, don't do this, don't do that. We can do this. No. God said, go. You need to go. Because that door can't be shut, be open for you. First, you're to get up. Thank you. Second, you got to get up. Give him praise. And then when you get yourself together, go ahead and read the word. When you read the word, you what? You gain knowledge. When you gain knowledge, you get hungry. When you get hungry, you need to be fed more. Am I right? The more you read, the more you want. The more knowledge you get, the more he's going to give you. And the more he gives you, the more blessings come in your way. And the more blessings come in your way, opportunity is going to come your way also. And doors going to be open from this side to that side. If we love the Lord the way we should, there's three things that happen. So Tom, you ready for it? Three things that's going to happen if we love the Lord the way we should. Number one. God will guide our lives. God will guide our lives. Number two, God will shine light on us. God will shine light on us. And number three, God will bring joy to our hearts. Hallelujah. He loved you so much, he gave his only son's life up for you. People, his son died for you. You don't realize that. You go around in this world today doing anything and everything that you want to in this world, and you don't realize the value of your life and what was paid to have you to have the life you had. You've made some bad mistakes in your days. We, we all have made some mistakes. Went down the wrong path. Or stumbled over to the wrong side. Or just did, went to a place that we weren't supposed to go. But he's been there for us. Has God ever gotten a hold of you and got a hold of your attention? You, you know what I mean? In other words, have God come into your life and something happened to you? On sickness fell on you. Something started aching you. You started losing things. You started things happening bad in your life. That's God getting your attention. But pray before you find out bad news. When you find out bad news, stop shouting in your bad news. But when you shout in your bad news, give God glory. While you in it, because he's going to bring you out of it. 